You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now, the federal government has pegged uh, FX rate at 700 naira per dollar, and the overhead cost has spiked the 26 trillion naira 2024 budget. You know, so but we have someone who will discuss that with us here. We have uh, um, Mukhtar Mohammed, international finance and economics analyst. Uh, who will be talking with us uh, from Lagos here. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mukta. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Some people are projecting that the dollar may get to 2,000 two naira, or at least um, uh, 1,200 uh, 1, naira in the nearest uh, future, maybe in the coming days. And the federal government is pegging uh, theirs at 700 naira per dollar. Uh, so let's start to see how this is possible. Why will they do this? And what parameters are they using to see that this will be uh, what the dollar would be like and to finance their budget? I, I think the main thing that for me, um, what, what they think is the real exchange rate, what they think the dollar should exchange for. What we are telling the dollar to the Naira should be essential. I keep saying that what we are seeing playing out in the in the FX market as it stands now is a uh, speculator having a few days. So I I might totally agree with them that um, the current uh, price, I mean the current risk between the uh, Naira and the dollar that they are trying to use in the budget, it should be the actual rate, even if you go to Based on what uh, the Bank of America said some time ago, they even said that they think they should be between 600 to 650. And I think that's better. So I think um, the, 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 they might be picking it up, and I, I can say they could be right. Yeah, but saying could, is, uh, isn't that dangerous to the economy? If you are not definite about what it's going to be, what if they place it at this and it becomes higher? Well, I, I, I understand the fear of people. I understand why people are moving the exchange rate to as uh, high as uh, 1,250. But I stand to be corrected. Uh, we don't, we, we've not gotten to that point where we have so much shock. Uh, oil price is still well. And um, the only thing that is driving on down at the start is right, liquidity. And when we talk about liquidity, we're talking about uh, the inflow of effort which has not been as it used to be, especially because of the uh, oil itself that we experienced. And then the COVID-19 pandemic, the Russia-Ukraine crisis, the, uh, the importation of refined petroleum products. And uh, if you look at what the federal government is saying, by, by the NFPC or what we are expecting from Nanute Refinery, we expect that uh, all this will become a thing of the past in the soonest possible future. And that will ease the pressure on the Naira. Um, all that things that have uh, produced for you in uh, the backlog, especially those that have to do with the aviation company. And I think that uh, the government said they are working on that. They are working on all stakeholders to make sure that it's addressed as soon as possible. Even the CDN government promised that they, in the next couple of weeks, they will be paying off the value of about $9 billion to uh, the financial institution. So I think, again, um, it's looking good. Um, the oil, um, 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 production has been improved. We are, we are now doing about 1.7 million barrels per day from a low of over 900,000 barrels some months ago. So it looks good, and I think um, in what we are experiencing as a temporary challenge, uh, just due to the uh, floating of the currency, which I think is one of the best things we've done. But again, we did it without having enough liquidity to intervene in the market. And the CBN now said that now we will not intervene in the market. So hopefully, I think um, they, they have their parameter right. They should get it. Um, I'm excited about putting the benchmark at 72.5 dollars per barrel. Even if present oil is selling above uh, 90 dollars per barrel. So that shows that we have about 20 dollars in our service and SS food account. And that will be making a lot of difference if, you, if we are able to meet our quotation of two points. To that the federal government is proposing. Okay. Uh, the let, let, let's make some sense out of it for the lame uh, men like us. Um, 
we know uh, that, or at least experts say that uh, the pressure is on the dollar because nothing, uh, or not many things are bringing dollar into the market and there are so many things that are removing the small ones that we have in the economy. And now, it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem like there are deliberate efforts to make sure that uh, we have more things that will provide us dollar into the economy. And then, a few days ago, the federal government removed the ban, so to speak, on 43 items that were banned um, some time ago by the previous administration. And some people fear that this will bring even more pressure on the Naira. What do you think? Because you're trying to make the Naira stronger, the dollar to come down a little bit, and you're pegging at 700, then you're removing ban on items that will need dollar to even import. So will that, be, yeah. will that not be more pressure? Uh, I, I agree with you, there will be more pressure. Um, I totally agree with what you just said. But again, we ought also look at um, what the CDN is trying to achieve because uh, what is causing the uh, um, volatility or the, the pattern of the Naira is this for the trade buying item. Because most of these items are not um, adequately uh, produced here in this country. We don't have enough of it. So a lot of it come out, out from the shore of this country. And so what, what we are seeing is that uh, we are seeing a situation where the government is let them come to the uh, official market will be able to provide for them. So for them to see that, I mean, they won't have made provision for that and they make sure that provision are seamless. You shouldn't forget that we have a $3 billion that we have collected from our, from, from the Affairs Bank to the uh, NMPC. So uh, I, I feel also maybe they are also looking at that also using that to, to, to reduce the pressure of the Naira. And remember recently the, the World Bank also said that uh, Nigeria might need to borrow FX to be able to meet uh, the, the, the volatility in the ICD. So when you look at all this, I think um, it, 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 if they are able to get it, like you said, if they are able to meet those demand, then it will bring down the pressure. But if they unban this uh, uh, um, item and still they are not able to meet um, yeah, well, because uh, I don't know, uh, one of the items was rice, and if rice now can be imported freely into the country, that means the federal government seems to have given up on the fact that we can produce rice that we can export to other countries as well. And if that is the case, well, then I don't know. Yeah, like when you talk about the rice, uh, the last time we saw anything about rice, we saw the pyramid in Abuja. And after that, it seems that immediately we saw the pyramid, the rice disappeared. We have not, have, we've not exported any rice. We've not been able to meet local, local production or even local demand of rice. And even when it is done, the cost of production is so high and based on the cost of energy. And when they provide energy for themselves, then diesel has gone over over 500 percent from from now so definitely um it's not saying that the foreign rice are more cheaper than the nigerian rice and so what you see is that um, a lot of nigerian people are surrounding the foreign rice and so these people that are importing this foreign rice are the ones that are putting pressure in the naira or from the naira because they have to get dollar to make in more of this foreign rice i think the i understand the fears of most nigerians but i think what the federal government should do they should still encourage local production and then maybe they begin to put tariffs tariff on those um, uh, and 43 ban items. So if they are coming in, their tariff will be high so that our local will be able to com compete with this. Because most Nigerians are, living at, uh, are not even happy with the local production. They say that uh, why can we think we are producing something locally and it seems to be more expensive than what is imported into the country? I think that was the biggest challenge. And also, not to forget that most of these banned items still find their way into the country without paying the normal tariff through the border, whereby this thing that smuggled into this country with collision from security agents. So we need to know that also it's a major problem. Mm. Okay, but well, okay, the projection for um, 2024 budget is 26 trillion naira. Let me just have your take on that. That's the biggest so far, 26 trillion naira uh, budgeted or, pro, uh, or proposed for the, uh, 2024. 
Mukhtar, can you hear me? Okay. I'm saying that the projection for the 2024 budget is 26 trillion naira. What do you feel about that figure and how realizable is that? Well, uh, I think they are ambitious. And again, they are, again, they are, they are revenue based on uh, revenue based on uh, oil production, which they have moved to about 2.2, like I said. If that happened, they could meet it. But if you are doing 1.7 and the government is targeting that by December, they should be able to do 2 million. And so by the new financial year, they should be hitting 2.2. I think that will, they will be able to meet it. And um, they are looking at internal direct revenue. We are still waiting for the uh, reform in the tax um, uh, sector. We don't know how that will impact on revenue. Uh, uh, for me, I think um, it's a little bit very ambitious. Um, especially when you talk about oil price at um, 72 point something dollar per bar. So definitely it's, um, it's a challenging uh, budget. Um, hopefully, by the day, the Minister for Finance and um, the, 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 the uh, uh, Finance and Economic Planning will give us uh, more details on that. Oh, okay. Well, most of this money is overhead cost, and I don't know how that's going to be. But we know that uh, our states uh, and maybe the federal government, before they implement a budget, is mostly uh, less than 80% of the budget, and now it is going as high as this. Just some pointers to how to make this uh, budget um, a reality, uh, work for us, let this budget work for us. We have just one minute uh, to go. What are the things that they need to do to make sure that they can implement this budget? I have a problem with the liquor expenditure of our because we've not, uh, we've not seen a change in strategy. I think we've seen worse in terms of uh, strategy with this current uh, administration mm. and it seems to uh, be more political appointees than we have ever invested and so the cost of um, the cost of governance is going up and the, the revenue is not improving and then expenditure when you look at um, the national assemblies and others so you are not so excited about it so i'm not so excited about the correct expenditure uh, especially for allowances and others so Definitely, I have a challenge, and that's why I think that um, the budget, um, implementing this budget, will be very challenging for them. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Mukhtar, for coming on the program and talking with us on uh, this issue. Thank you. Okay. We've been talking with Mukhtar Mohammed, international finance and economic analyst. Uh, he was talking with us from Lagos here. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at making room for disability and disability issues in governance. Stay with us.